Over the last few months, we've seen incredible changes in how we use data and information, all brought about by the evolution of artificial intelligence. In a previous video, I talked with Andy Kaufman about the potential changes that are gonna take place to the career and approach of project managers. Then I did an experiment on ChatGPT to see if it could create project documentation for me. But what I really wanted to see was the next generation of project portfolio management tools that would feature artificial intelligence and to try to understand what the impact would be on me as a PMO and on project managers who would be using these tools. So I reached out to a friend at Keto Software and asked if we could arrange a demo and we agreed that I'd go and meet him over at the Gartner event in London. When I got to the event, we found it was just way too busy, way too noisy, and it was impossible to make a decent recording there. But I did get a glimpse of the tool and what I saw there blew my mind. So we agreed to do the demo remotely a few weeks later. And when we got together, I had a chance to meet with Tim and Marcus from Keto Software. I went into the demo wanting to understand a few things in particular, specifically what the impact would be on me as a PMO that works in a project and portfolio level of a business. I wanted to know what the impact would be on project managers and their levels of admin. And I wanted to know what the tool would offer to a chief executive officer who's looking at their gigantic multinational business and is wondering what the threats are in their portfolio space, what the opportunities are, where their attention should be focused. By the end of Marcus's and Tim's demo, I came away knowing, yes, this tool will do a huge amount of my job. Yes, it will help project managers and will speed up their process. And yes, it will tell CEOs everything they need to know. I'm gonna shut my mouth now, we're gonna go straight into the demo, and I invite you to answer in the comments your thoughts on what this tool is, a PMO killer or a PMO savior. So basically what Keto is, it's a web-based application that enables us to design different kind of portfolio process life cycles. And what we do and the users do, they use the single sign-on. For example, now I can see my project, a listing of projects that I should be involved and should be uh, doing work inside of them. There could be a list of my ideas, there could be a list of my tasks. But this is very dependent on the customer organization and what kind of things that the customer organization is managing with Keto. New feature this year that we have been implementing is the AI capability, the AI plus functionalities with the Keto platform. And uh, that enabled us to use different kind of language models, like we can use ChatGPT or any language model basically available and link it to the Keto platform. And we have designed, for example, this view, the portfolio analysis has been made so that the Keto builders can define different kind of prompts. Like the, in AI world, prompt is basically a text. It's a question that what, that what you want to ask from the AI about your portfolio. And if I click on this one, I can rerun this question. So now the Keto, what it's doing, it's basically when you have the portfolio and all the data inside of your portfolio, it's combining that into a package and sending it to the language model. So the language model knows your portfolio, knows all of your projects. You don't have to read them through. The language model reads them through. And then it's asking a question, what is the quick overview of your portfolio? And all of this text is generated by AI now. We have the capability of asking the AI to return data tables. And this one is uh, showing that what projects are very profitable and require attention from you. And this prioritization number, this is generated by AI. But this is an example how the inside of the status report, the AI can help the people on doing a better status report. And in this case, I, I have work completed. I have a text in here. I can ask the AI to improve that text. And now it's correcting the grammar for me and making it a little better. And also we have the translations on here that the individual persons who are reading the status report, if I'm a German person, I want the translations, the system to translate it to me as a German language. So it's better and easier for me to understand the text that is coming from there. Is the project manager able to edit this at all? Are they able to make their own contributions directly into this? You can get the AI to generate that text with you know, clicking the, the purple flower button, but that mm -hmm. text is not then set in stone. You can go and edit it. It's, yeah. it's 
suggestion. So, you know, a project manager could, could you know, whether working on the project status report, they can get it, generate the text, and they can go in and review it and make changes. Yeah, they can, uh, the input that they're giving is the, little, the content into these fields. This text is typically the one that they give some kind of text, and then you can use the AI to improve on that, the grammar and these kind of things. Also, we could add, I didn't add any template currently in here, but if that can be retrieved from some other fields that are already inside of Keto, uh, that could be imp inputted into the template that the AI is using. We can create dashboard graphics, graphics by prompt, and that, I think that's the very cool way of doing it. Because now the PMOs or the managers don't need to uh, kind of define the dashboard graphics; they can just write in a question. And this graphics in here, this is actually generated by AI. So we're asking a question: Please provide me a bar chart, and that answers to this and this question and the AI is providing you the dashboard graphics for that. And the next AI functionality is that we can chat with the portfolio. And this is a very good way of the individual persons just creating ad hoc questions about the portfolio. And in here, in this chat, I could ask, for example, what projects are not meeting their objectives? Keto is sending all the information about your projects, and now it's giving me a list of different kind of projects that are not meeting their objectives. So this is kind of the AI knows the status reports and the different situation of the project. They can give you these kind of answers. We could ask it, for example, what projects are not started and we should start them now. So I think this is a little bit maybe even scary for the organizations now. The PMO function may be uh, removing some of the power because they may be not doing the reporting and controlling what information is sent upwards. The top management will be going inside of the tools and they don't have to read through all of the projects. They can just start asking different questions about the data that they are having. Then AI does the hard work of reading through and understanding the portfolio data. I could ask, uh, can you provide me three new ideas for future projects like this? And now, based on the projects that I have inside the portfolio, the AI is inventing three new projects that I could be starting to evaluate inside of the project portfolio. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video. If this is your kind of thing, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna take the role of the chief executive officer in this case, because I can imagine this is a great way to bypass all of the people you'd normally go and ask a question of, and you just have to trust them to either recall the correct information, not slant the information the way that they want to slant it, <laughs> and to just get straight to the data. So that relies purely on the data itself being correct, and that's still a responsibility of the PMO. It's only, the, the outputs are only as good as the data has gone in there. But as a CEO, I think you've answered the, you've asked the first question, which is, you know, what should we do next? The other thing that I'd imagine is that in my CEO uh, position, I'll be thinking, what are the biggest threats to the portfolio? Oh, you put threads. Ah, no, it will probably understand it. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's content aware. Even if I mistype something, it kind of understands it. <laughs> Even the question was wrong. That's a good thing with the AI stuff. Oh, so they... right. You know, I'm beginning to wonder if you did that spelling error by mistake just to show <laughs> off how it I suspect that the CEO would read this and then would go marching into a meeting and would just... <laughs> <laughs> tell their subordinates, you need to go and deal with these threats. But the next thing that they'll probably ask is, how do we grow more? Because CEOs, they want to grow. They want to grow, that, that's, their, that's all they're thinking. So um, can it offer us some advice on how the company can gr best grow based on what it's doing? Oh, then I, let's say grow 
let's say faster, for example, like this. Different kind of ideas. And I think the next step, typically in the demos I do, I select one of the ideas that the AI is doing, and then I start to initiate a project from that. Let me uh, show you a little bit more how we could actually use this insight from portfolio and add it to the portfolio that I have. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So next could be that what, uh, like, give me one best idea for future project. Now it's giving me one best idea could be smart city energy solutions. Now it gives me a little bit more than I would be kind of needing for this, but I will take it all. Yeah. Uh, maybe not everything, but let, let me copy paste this text. So smart city energy solutions would be the idea. Now I'm going add it into the portfolio. So I can add smart city energy solution and I can set myself as a project manager so this form can be customized according to the customer's need and the portfolio model that they are doing and now I will be creating a new one now it for gives me the project charter the project card whatever you want to call it but let's play a little bit the project description I just copy pasted this one. I just put the what was the description that the AI gave me into the project description. Then I could be linking it to different. Like I want to grow, for example, and other metadata could be. I can select the legal entities for Finland. Business unit would be, uh, let's say, no, I don't know, solar classification. This is a very important one. So now I set up the card for the uh, this new idea that we had. Next, I'm going to business case tab. And now this is the place where it gets interesting. So I had some text that I inputted as the project description. Next thing, I need to do a business case for this one. And first question is the reason for the project. And now I have this flower icon. And everywhere in the user interface of Keto, we have these flower icons. And when I click it, now it's sending all the information about the project to the AI and asking the AI the question. Please give me the reasons, five, uh, three, probably five, five different reasons to make this project. So according to that description that was AI generated, it gave me these reasons to implement this project. When I have existing, existing text inside of the text field, I can click it again. And now it's not generating content, it's improving my text. If I mistype, mistype something, it's improving it and now it's making it more like a chapter, a little bit shorter and easier for the individual users to read. So I'm like generating content and improving the text. Right? The next thing we have the reasoning for the project. Then I could ask the AI, what are the five top things that I would need to do in order to implement this project? And now the AI is generating me five different things I could be considering to do in order to implement this project. And I could be adding the sixth reason, could be like, make a lot of money. This is kind of a, not the nicest way of saying, make more profits would be better. And now when we have text, I can ask the AI to improve on that text. And now it's sending the text that I wrote inside into the AI and it's returning me and the, it changes the strategic goal of the project is to actually let grow and make a lot of money. So it made it a little bit more polite way of saying that make more money into this text. Mm -hmm. So this is done by the prompts and I could be moving this further, asking about the risks again. So it's giving me five different risks that I could be doing. How will it affect customers? And now when we design the get process, we are adding and configuring these fields. And when we are adding these fields, we can basically set up pre-made prompts that enable the, uh, the different people who are initiating this project to help them generate this content. 
It's so going this take so much time. It saves a lot of time. Of course, we don't want to make people kind of stupid that they only click on the top corner. We want them to, of course, provide some of the content and improve it and give their own insights to it to make it a little bit better. The question that's probably going to be on most CEOs' mind here is how safe is it to be sharing my company's data with a third party? Uh, are there any protections in place to stop ChatGPT or the AI tool from running off of the company data and just dumping it somewhere else where a competitor can take advantage? Yeah, that's a very important uh, question. That a lot of the organizations are currently kind of uh, aligning different kind of policies on the AI, that what kind of tools can be used and what kind of terms the different vendors are giving from those AI tools. That's the worst thing that you want to do, that it kind of somebody's running off with your organizational data. And like with the Keto, we have uh, ISO, 27001 certification. So we're very strict on our uh, uh, security of our products. And that means that, of course, the location of the data and these kind of things are, have been aligned. But the AI tools that we uh, implement into this one, for example, this is using the ChatGPT, it's using from the Microsoft servers. And they uh, have a set of kind of terms that they are providing to us that basically tell that the none of the data that we are using for, for their products are not using, used to train the actual model. That, that's the first question that they have to have. And currently there's like a 30 day that they save the prawns to kind of, so that they have the possibility to see that if there is some violation of the way that the organization is using the uh, language model. So they have that kind of pro protection currently there, but after 30 days, it will be removed from those. But we have a very documented set of uh, kind of des descriptions how those things are done. So there you go. There's the demo. The machine thinks for us. It comes with ideas for us. It can tell you what to be worried about. It can tell you what to be excited about, and it'll do a lot of the writing for you. So. Let's go back to my original question. PMO killer or PMO savior? Let me know in the comments. Oh, one other thing, this wasn't a sponsored video. I didn't get any kind of payment from Keto for making this video. I was just really happy and excited to go and see their product. But I do fully intend on squeezing a cup of coffee out of Tim at some point in the future. <laughs> Hi Stuart, good to see you here today. And finally, if artificial intelligence and project management is your kind of thing, make sure to check out this video over here. I'm sure you'll enjoy it.